It is my great pleasure to talk to you today about Ride on King Jesus. I am George Elliot Clark, and uh, this song is very important to me uh, because it was recorded by my late great aunt, uh, Portia White. I'll say a little bit more about her later on. Uh, but she was Canada's first international black star of stage and song. Uh, she lived from 1911 to 1968 and was uh, world renowned uh, during her lifetime and, and of course long after. But uh, this is her signature spiritual that I want to talk about. And so again, um, I'm going to be commenting on the song, The Ethics of Ride On King Jesus. It's probable that most songs are ethical, whether they deal with topical subjects, stories from the headlines, or heroes, or scoundrels, or crimes, catastrophes, and controversies. And it is incontestable that so-called protest songs, folk songs, union movement songs, and occasionally even pop songs put ethics front and center. But few and elect and select are the song traditions that are preeminently sprung from protest versus injustice. And yet several of these phenomenal convicted auditory contestations now naturalized as just ordinary musical genres arise from the African-American experience of subjugation, oppression, and apartheid designed impoverishment and illiteracy. Indeed, the dominant pop song genre on the globe is rap, the musical arm of hip hop, which emerged in slum rich, gangsta plague, police besieged ghettos as a complaint and an analysis of post-civil rights movement, anti-Black racism, and economic injustice. Some may find it strange that I would name rap with all its rightly denounced sexism, homophobia, and empty celebration of status as originating in ethical grievance, and yet it did. In fact, I want to claim that rap is merely the updating and capitalist secularization of the anti-slavery plaints that arose spontaneously and anonymously out of the plantations and fields of the slave-holding U.S. South. We know these songs now as spirituals, though they were first called jubilee songs, or Negro religious folk songs, or sorrow songs, and please note the apparent contradiction of describing one body of songs as being both about jubilee or celebration as well as sorrow. But the epithet spirituals has stuck because there is something powerfully soulful about these anonymously and collectively composed songs that come out of struggle and survival, faith and hope, which cast enslaved African Americans as similar to biblical Hebrews, needing God to intervene here and now, to strike off the chains of bondage, to bring redemption and liberation, to lead the freed to the promised land of justice and equality. African American theologian James H. Cone, in his study, The Spirituals and the Blues, points out that for the slaves, it was the Hebrew scriptures, the so-called Old Testament, that furnished the archetypal heroes for their songs, especially Moses in his contest with Pharaoh. Fewer, Cone says, are those spirituals that center on Jesus, the superhero of the Greek scriptures, I mean the New Testament. Yet the representative spiritual I need now to talk about is Ride On, King Jesus, whose very title tells us that it is Jesus who is the song's subject, but not as a bent down martyr, abused, rebuked, and scorned, 
and then swooning unto death temporarily upon the cross, but as a majestic figure of regal triumph. The verses of the spiritual are almost embarrassingly plain, and I can't sing, but I need to try to give these verses, these lines, uh, the gusto that they should have. And so I say, quoting from the song, King Jesus rides a milk white horse. No man can uh, hinder me. The river Jordan he did cross. No man can a uh, hinder me. The composer of the spiritual pictures Jesus mounted on a snow white stallion, but as a conqueror, as a kind of Caesar, he crosses the Jordan River just as Julius Caesar crosses the Rubicon. This image is meant to uplift, to strengthen the spine of the listener and even the singer. The image suggests that we can meet any obstacle and persevere and triumph. It is a prescient vision of the civil rights movement spiritual, we shall overcome. The point is made by that refrain, no man can a uh, hinder me. The ethics here is also obvious. If the cause is correct, if the prayerful petitioner is righteous, socially just, I'll say, then he, she, they, we shall overcome. No man, i.e., no oppressor, no tyrant, no slave master, can a uh, hinder me. And I speak personally again now. I didn't grow up with this spiritual, even though I'm partly African American in my descent, and was born and raised the seventh generation Africadian, African Nova Scotian, Afro Metis, a part of a community who spring from what is now the United States, but who have been integral to Nova Scotia since the 17th century. Our major church, the African United Baptist Association of Nova Scotia, established in 1854, of uh, which I am now a member, does remember and sing many spirituals in its services. But I don't recall hearing Ride On King Jesus as a boy or youth. Instead, I was 21, and upon visiting a patrilineal great uncle in Toronto in 1981, received an LP, an old-fashioned vinyl album, of my late great aunt, Portia White, 1911 to 68, or again her dates, a contralto who was Canada's first internationally celebrated black concert singer from basically the 1930s to the 1940s. And then she was a teacher in Toronto, a music teacher in Toronto, teacher of song in Toronto until her death in 1968. So that very day that I received this album, this heirloom, if you, if you like, I played the recording, which is a selection of Schubert Lieder, French art song and folk song, including pieces by Bizet and Foray, as well as English airs. However, the piece that thrilled and shook me was Ride On King Jesus on the album, Think On Me is the title, uh, and produced by White House Records, 1968. Ride on a king As a beginning poet and scholar, as I was then, it was a necessary affirmation, instrumental inspiration for me, suggesting that if one's talent is powered by faith and by apt insight and wisdom and resolute and courageous, then one may in fact accomplish whatever one 
needs to strive to do. Yet, it's critical to recognize that the psalm, while speaking of an individual, is actually communal. It is truly stating no oppressor can hinder us. We can be like Lord Conqueror Jesus and for that barrier, overturn that obstacle, whatever it is, unto spiritual victory and complete liberation. 